Alex from Tennessee. On April 24th, 2013, an anonymous 4chan user posted an image from Google Maps with a cryptic caption reading, Buy this rubble, your prize awaits Tennessee. Park nearby and walk to this point for the secret. It's under plastic at this point. Good luck. The image appeared to be an aerial view screenshot of a random location in the town of Elizabethton, Tennessee. In the screenshot, there was a pin marking the exact location of the coordinates the user had entered. If you enter the coordinates into Google Maps today, you'll find a bunch of dilapidated, sketchy-looking old buildings. At first, other users played the post off as a joke, with some mentioning that the OP was probably crazy or just looking for internet attention. But a little less than 20 minutes later, the uploader once again became active on the thread and answered everyone's remarks by saying, No one shall claim the prize. Time to try other websites. While other 4chaners debated amongst themselves in regards to what kind of prize the uploader was talking about, the OP himself responded to the speculations with the comment, It is warm. Over the next couple of hours, the OP proceeded to post a series of strange and ominous messages in the thread, such as, No cops here, someone coming for the prize, and little friend fly away, why is no one coming, see? With this last comment, he also posted an image of what appears to be the cloth from an unidentified animal lying on the grass. The extremely long fingernails and disturbing nature of the image were unsettling enough, but the thread was only about to get more eerie. A little less than two hours after the original post, the OP continued posting strange comments. At 10.23pm, he said, I am angry you are not here. My friend moves. My friend is not the prize. A few minutes later, the OP commented, Plastic prize, and I've had my friend for long now. Not what matters today. I need people to come. Seeing that nobody was claiming his so-called prize, the OP then uploaded two images to the thread. In the first grainy image, we can see what appears to be some sort of dark room or dungeon, while the second image is a picture of a handwritten note with the words, Please come, Wednesday, April 24th, 2013. The last message shared by the OP in the thread was, Singing tonight, someone come. After that, the uploader went completely quiet, and it wasn't until five nights later that the thread had an important update. At around 9.45pm on April 29th, a user simply named Alex uploaded a series of comments and images in a follow-up thread in which he mentioned that he was at the location posted by the original anonymous user. With his comments and pictures, Alex narrated what he saw inside the dark, mysterious location, posting updates periodically for his fellow 4chaners. Disturbingly, the images he uploaded seemed to get more unsettling as the night went on. First, he uploaded a few pictures of plastic garbage bags and other images showing his general surroundings, but when he showed the bag's contents, things got a little darker. As per the images, the bag contains what appears to be a mummified pelvic bone and a styrofoam plate with a messy inscription that reads, Plate's a date, a very important mate. You shouldn't have come, I lied. He then uploaded an ominous image of a bunch of prescription pills in their containers surrounded by dust and cobwebs. Unfazed by the creepy message on the plate, Alex continued to investigate the mysterious underground location until he mentioned in one of the comments that he heard a car coming and decided to head out. This was his last post. Window thing isn't a window. It's some other vent thing. Turning around and leaving around through wood door. Jesus. After this post, Alex was never heard from again. Following the disturbing series of posts, many people were left wondering if something had happened to him. Although many users were concerned about Alex's safety, it's unlikely that anything bad happened to him. There seemed to be no records of murders or kidnappings in Elizabethton, Tennessee from that time, and a case like this would surely have been on the news. This leaves the question of whether or not Alex's experience was genuine. Although the images he uploaded are definitely creepy and appear to have been taken at the actual location, there are some clues in the post that indicate he could have been lying about his whereabouts while he was uploading the images and comments. If we look at the average span of time that went by between his posts, we can see that he was posting pretty much once a minute, which is an insane posting speed for someone who is visiting a dangerous, unknown location for the first time. This makes it much more likely that Alex had the pictures handy on his desktop and was uploading them in rapid succession to make it seem as if he was a random 4chaner who went to go claim the mysterious prize. The most widely accepted possibility in this rabbit hole is that Alex was also the original anonymous uploader and just wanted to mess with people by creating an internet mystery. Although, there still isn't a real clear conclusion to the story. Five years after the original discussion took place on 4chan, in a video that's since been deleted, a YouTuber by the name of Noah went to the location and went into the abandoned old buildings. Inside, he found what looked like the belongings of the homeless people who probably lived there. 
but other than that, there wasn't much to look at. It's more than likely that Alex fabricated the entire story to gain internet attention, but because this was never confirmed, the mystery has been kept alive by various other YouTubers and uploaders in online forums, as people continue to search for a definitive explanation. Thrift Store Discoveries Thrift stores have certain guidelines and rules regarding the kinds of items they can receive from donors. This helps prevent the stores from getting filled with damaged, unusable, or illegal items, and most of the time the screening process is pretty effective. However, due to the large volume of donations that many stores receive, it's often impossible to keep track of absolutely everything that comes in. As a result, buyers oftentimes end up finding all kinds of unexpected items in thrift stores, ranging from the cool and unlikely to the jarring and extremely disturbing. An example of this is this image that was allegedly found in a photo album at a Goodwill in Washington. The image originally started gaining attention in the online forum Reddit when it was uploaded by a woman who claimed that it was originally posted on a true crime Facebook group. The woman who uploaded it to Facebook allegedly deleted it after people started spamming her inbox with questions about the jarring image. The image in question shows two men in a small creek with their hands bound behind their backs. Disturbingly, one of them is face down in the water, while the other one sits upright. In the foreground, the shadow of what looks like a man holding a weapon can be seen. According to the Reddit post, the woman who uploaded it to Facebook knew someone who had bought a photo album at a Goodwill in Washington. The album was allegedly empty, except for this one photo. Immediately after it was posted to Reddit, people started speculating and coming up with possible explanations for the image. One of the initial theories that gained a lot of traction online was that the image could have been a part of a low-budget horror or crime film. Others speculated that the image shows some kind of military training or fraternity hazing ritual. It's also possible that the image shows a real crime scene where someone might have abducted two men, thrown them in the river in handcuffs, and held them at gunpoint. The fact that this was never confirmed makes the image all the more creepy, and people have continued searching for explanations to this day. In my research, I found that this isn't the only unexpected picture that's been found in thrift stores in the past couple of decades. As it turns out, cursed thrift store finds are almost an entire genre of their own in several online communities, with people uploading images of the strange, cool, and unlikely objects they've found in random thrift stores all over the internet every day. In January 2023, a TikTok user by the name of JC uploaded a video with the caption, When I bought a camera at Goodwill in Arizona and found a SIM card in it that had photos of my dad who lives in Idaho. In the second part of the video, the user shows her laptop screen where she downloaded the photos from the camera. One of the blurry images featured in the TikTok, which appears to have been taken from below, shows the uploader's dad with a smirk on his face. In the caption, JC claimed that as soon as she saw the picture, she was so caught off guard that she immediately called her dad. Although thousands of TikTok users asked her for an update, she never explained where the image came from or how the camera ended up in Arizona if her dad lives in Idaho. Although it might seem like a one in a million chance to find a picture like this in a SIM card, it turns out that the occurrence of these coincidences is actually pretty common. In JC's TikTok, several people jumped in the comments to talk about the time something similar had happened to them. One user commented, One time my grandma found a wedding album at the thrift store and it had pics of me and my mom because we attended. Another user commented, I work at a thrift store. I found a ripped up old Christmas photo of my aunt's family on a shelf in a pile one day. They don't live in the same town. The further I went down the rabbit hole, the more disturbing the thrift shop finds seemed to get, with some of them being incredibly creepy. In September 2023, Goodwill employees at a store in Goodyear, Arizona were sorting through a donations box when they came across a real human skull. After reporting the incident to the police, an investigation was launched to determine if it was a part of some sort of crime. Fortunately, police determined that the person had died of natural causes. Though, this obviously doesn't explain how the skull even got into the donations box, and the investigation is still ongoing. Creepy thrift store finds have become increasingly popular since the birth of online forums, and it's likely that many of the mysteries surrounding these strange and often terrifying pictures and objects will never be solved. UVB-76 Since the 1970s, a Russian shortwave radio station has been broadcasting on the frequencies 4625 and 4810 kHz. The station is still active, and depending on where you are in the world, you can still tune in to listen. For over 50 years, the station has been broadcasting a short, monotonous buzz that plays for 24 hours a day at about 25 tones per minute. This is what it sounds like.
Before 2010, the physical station was located in a bunker in the town of Pavarovo near Moscow. But one day in 2010, the station went silent for about a day, and when it reappeared, the broadcast was coming from a different location in St. Petersburg. After September 2010, the call sign of the radio station also changed from UVB 76 to MDZHB. Since then, the call sign has been changed multiple times, and as of 2019, ANVF is the most commonly used call sign for the station. Much of what we know about what the original station in Pavrava looked like is thanks to the testimony and images that was uploaded to different blogs and websites by several users who visited the station after it was abandoned. In 2011, a blogger who goes by the name of WASD uploaded hundreds of pictures to his blog from his trip to where the UVB 76 station used to be housed. After visiting, he said, It is worth mentioning that the bunker is a quiet and deserted dark place, somewhat similar to a labyrinth with a bunch of corridors and rooms. It's better not to go there without a flashlight because there's absolutely nothing to light there. It's completely dark. As of today, the original station has been out of order for years. The buzz that can be heard in the broadcast is pretty unsettling in itself, and this is part of the reason why UVB76 has become an extremely popular internet rabbit hole. At certain points during the broadcast, the buzz breaks up and a male Russian voice can be heard reciting encoded messages in the form of numbers and letters. Another detail that has caught the attention of listeners is that the frequency at which the voice can be heard reciting the encoded messages is not regular at all. This is what it would sound like. When the station was first launched, the voice only interrupted the constant buzzing once every few months. But ever since the station was moved, it's been heard with increasing frequency. Strangely, the voice has also been heard in the days leading up to important international events, such as when Russia annexed Crimea in 2014. This has caused many people to speculate about the purpose of UVB-76, with many people thinking that it's been used since its creation for spy communications. Others suggest it may be a counterattack measure for nuclear war, but after looking around on various Russian websites and forums, I was able to find a much more likely theory. In several Russian forums, it's common to find discussions on UVB-76 in which ex-military members debunk the myths that have circulated around the station for decades. Those familiar with the Russian military have explained that because the codes are constantly being changed, recycled, and transformed, it's pretty much impossible to know what exactly is being sent on the station without the key. But far from being used to send messages to spies, the most likely possibility is that the voice messages are being used for Russian military drills and other basic military activities. From what I was able to find, the purpose of the continuous noise is just to stop others from broadcasting over the same frequency. Ultimately, there are hundreds of other radio stations around the world with a signature placeholder to prevent others from broadcasting on that frequency. And although this has given rise to one of the most popular internet mysteries of the decade, the reality behind UVB-76 is probably a lot less dark and mysterious than many people seem to think. The Disappearance of Doveland, Wisconsin If you've ever gone digging around for internet rabbit holes, you might have heard of a town called Doveland, Wisconsin. If the name sounds unfamiliar, Doveland is described by users in online forums and groups as a small town in Wisconsin that housed hundreds of military families in the previous century. And it's often mentioned that the town was made for the sole purpose of building Project Sanguine. Project Sanguine was a US Navy project proposed in 1968 to improve communications with submerged submarines using extremely low frequency radio waves. The initially proposed system for Project Sanguine, which was meant to survive a full-fledged nuclear attack, would have required a giant antenna consisting of 6,000 miles of buried cables in a rectangular grid covering two-fifths of the state of Wisconsin. Although this system was never implemented because of protests from residents of neighboring towns, several sources claim that a smaller, modified system was built in Doveland in the 70s. At first, the story of Doveland might not sound like anything out of the ordinary, except for one detail. It's long been believed that at some point in the 1990s, the entire town of Dublin, Wisconsin somehow disappeared off the face of the earth. Strangely, Dublin doesn't appear on any maps, and if you look up information on the town today, you won't find any official reports about its history, which is incredibly strange considering that over the years, a huge number of internet users have claimed to have relatives who used to live in the town. 
For example, a user named Jamie Ivanov posted the following account of the rural town on Reddit. I just learned of all the noise surrounding Doveland, and I think I can add some insight. Doveland was a small town in Wisconsin that housed a lot of military families. My father lived there for a year or two and spoke of it occasionally. The main thing I remember is that it had to do with Project Sanguine in the early 60s. I don't think it was X-Files type stuff, but the town was destroyed after an incident. I thought they were digging up a ton of land for something and they flooded the town or something, but this is a rehashed secondhand memory from years ago. In several online forums, websites, and groups, people have also uploaded pictures of shirts, mugs, and other souvenirs from the town. One particular post on the obscure Urban Legends Wikia page even features a photo that was supposedly recovered from Doveland, Wisconsin. The image in question shows a middle-aged waiter sitting next to a young woman who puts her arm around him as they both smile at the camera. On the right-hand side, a young kid can also be seen sitting across the table from them. Although the image has been reposted in many online forums and groups, there seems to be no evidence at all that suggests the picture was actually taken at a restaurant in the allegedly vanished town. In the past decade, many people have also reported a digital ghost trace of Dublin in the form of Google search autocorrect and recommended search options suggesting the term Dublin, Wisconsin. But mysteriously, the suggestion doesn't lead the user anywhere in particular, which is added to the mystery surrounding the town. Throughout these past two decades, reports of vanished towns have been pretty common in the online mystery and horror community, but there's one thing in particular that makes Dublin stand out from other urban legends of towns that have disappeared off the face of the earth. Some of the most notorious vanished towns have been found to be part of different alternate reality games, or even online publicity campaigns for movies and video games. But from my research, nothing like this can be linked to Dublin, Wisconsin, and everything seems to indicate that this town never actually existed. The earliest mention I was able to find of the town was in a 2015 Tumblr post, in which a user asked if anyone had ever heard of the small rural town of Dublin, Wisconsin, after which the OP discussed the main theories behind the phenomenon of the alleged vanished town. One of the more far-fetched theories that has gained traction in online forums is that Dublin did exist back in the day, but a freak accident that occurred during Project Sanguine somehow shifted the entire town into another dimension, or we shifted into a reality where the town never existed. Obviously, this is a bit of a stretch, but a more down-to-earth theory is that something did happen during Project Sanguine that turned the entire town of Dublin into an uninhabitable wasteland, forcing the military to cover up their mistake by evacuating the families that lived there and destroying the entire town. Many users seem to favor this theory, but the fact that most accounts of the town's existence have come from online users and not from people who actually live there or from residents of neighboring towns suggests that the whole thing might be an example of mass delusion, which brings us to a more realistic and widely accepted theory. Although it's unlikely that a large number of users met in secret and agreed to spread lies about the town across various online platforms just to mess with people, it is possible that Dublin, Wisconsin is an example of what social psychologists call the Mandela Effect. The Mandela Effect describes an eerie phenomenon whereby a large number of people collectively misremember events, historical facts, and other famous pop culture moments, such as when people misremember Ilsa Lund's line from Casablanca as, Play it again, Sam. In the movie, the real line is, Play it once, Sam, but many people swear they remember it differently. With all the memorabilia of Dublin that has emerged online in the past decade, it's possible that certain residents of Wisconsin associated the name of the town with another town they had visited, which could have led to the mass confusion that became apparent in various online forums. The Google recommended search and autocorrect bug that is still active today could simply be the result of thousands of people worldwide searching for the town, bumping up the importance of the town's name in the algorithm, which could also explain the emergence of souvenirs from Dublin. As often happens when new trends take over the internet, the rise of memorabilia from the fictitious town was most likely an attempt to make a few dollars by people who use bots to find trending topics in forums and automatically generate merchandise related to them. Although this seems to be the most likely theory, the Dublin, Wisconsin phenomenon is extremely odd and has no clear conclusion on whether or not it actually ever existed, which has contributed to its status as one of the most mysterious rabbit holes of the decade.